Hi everyone, I'm Lee Arkanal. Today we're going to explore the behaviors of a particular strain of ransomware that's been making headlines lately, and that would be the Black Cat or Alpha V ransomware. We'll examine why concentrating on behaviors can offer us a much better strategy than relying on traditional indicators of compromise like file names or hashes. Plus, I'll show you how Cyborg can help improve your current hunting capabilities. So, talking about ransomware and hospitals is always a scary thing. Simply because whenever you start discussing ransomware, you think about things like impact, where systems are getting locked up and they can't access what they need to. Especially if it is the medical systems where the doctors store the records and so on. Then we're talking about lives. And I don't, I don't want to try and sit here and spread, you know, FUD. But it does get serious when it comes to hospitals because that's as close to attacking a the human life via a cybersecurity attack as you can possibly get, um, other than, I guess, you know, like critical infrastructure uh, attacks. But either way, when we're talking about hospitals, recently, uh, Change Healthcare was attacked by Black Cat ransomware, and it was successful. And looking uh, analysts looking at the blockchain analyzed that Black Cat, or once again, ALF-V, did actually get paid $22 million dollars through the extortion of the data and the lock that it had on the systems. Now, there are other things that happened afterwards, which, you know, saying Black Cat imploded because people weren't getting paid the money that they were owed and so on. But that's not what we're worried about. We're not really worried about, I, I could care less if Black Cat ceased to exist. What I'm focusing on is the malware itself, what it looks like, and how we can research uh, finding it in our environment based off of event logs and not just alerts of detections. So let's jump into the MITRE ATT&CK matrix, which is always a great wealth of information that could help us along this journey. So if you're familiar with the MITRE ATT&CK matrix, you know that there's a thing about 14 tactics, and they have a lot of different techniques that are covered that explain goals that adversaries have, or what techniques they've used to achieve these goals in the past. Now, the documentation is top-notch, and I, I don't think there's anything that tops it. If you're malware driven or you are APT group driven, not just uh, TTPs or tactics, techniques, or sub techniques driven, you can definitely use this, the information here as well. So if we jump to CTI and jump down to software, that takes us to an overview of the so software or more importantly, malware that they've had listed and that they've seen. So if we come down here, we'll find Black Hat right before Black Coffee, which is always delicious. But here we go. MITRE ATT&CK, or the MITRE organization, says that Black Hat is a ransomware written in Rust and has been offered via the ransomware as a service or RAS model. Now, we can always find the associated or the alias names that have been uh, used in the past by different organizations. We see Alpha V uh, or Alpha, however you want to say that, uh, Noboris, and what's great is that, that they always uh, reference what they look like. Before we jump into the behaviors, before we jump into anything else, let's talk about how threat hunting on behaviors gives us an edge over indicators of compromise. So I'm going to use another site, and this one is Malware Bazaar. This is a place where you can go and look for malware samples and download them and analyze them yourselves. But if we do the tag Black Hat, so there's a lot of opportunities uh, that you can use. It's things you can download, analyze statically, dynamically, you know, whatever the case may be. But here's the truth. Now, as much as an indicator of compromise is great for a quick win or like a search or something like that, it only gives you a point in time to be successful in detection. And what I mean by that is hashes are an output of an algorithm. So a file's input goes through the algorithm and then you get the output value, which is the hash value. The adversary can change that as quickly as they want. A good example is a black hat. We scroll all the way down and we see that the first, uh, the first entry here is 2021, where the first values that were are stored here. It might not mean that that was the first time it was ever seen, but this might be the first time that it was, uh, or a sample was given to Malware Bazaar. But what we see is that it's three executables with three different file hashes. Now, you can argue that this might be different parts of the attack. One might be the payload, one, one might be the encryptor itself. But either way, if that is the case, then why do we have all these other different indicators of compromise? Why do we have on, uh, in 2022, February 22nd, 
we have one, two, three, four, five, six different hashes. It, it's just known that adversaries will change the hash of their malware as soon as they realize that it's being detected on by antivirus or they see it in an Intel report. Because believe it or not, the adversaries track that too. They have their own CTI teams basically saying, are we being detected yet? But if you only take the 22nd, or can you imagine updating the list constantly and saying we're hunting for this IOC? Yes, an IOC is once it's bad or once a file hash is bad, normally it's attached to a, a piece of malware. So it's always going to be bad. But if you say, hey, you know what? We're taking all these, put them in a query, and then we're searching on it and we're going to hunt and we find something. Uh, and if you don't find anything, you're in the clear. That's, that's not true because they could have changed the sample again. They could have changed the hash, which would change the, uh, or change the coding, which would change the hash in itself. And then you get a false sense of security. It, the threat hunting is not a binary process. It's not like a, yes, we're compromised or no, we're compromised. It's we are constantly looking for the malicious behaviors. And I know I keep talking about behaviors. So let's get into what that means. So if we go back to the minor attack matrix, when we scroll down, what we see is techniques used. Now, when it comes to ransomware, you think of destruction, you see, think of encryption, and you'll see those techniques used as well. So we see data encrypted for impact. We see command and scripting interpreter, Windows command shell. We see disk wipe, disk content wipe. So we see these different techniques and sub techniques, and we're able to figure out all the techniques and behaviors that have been seen along with this ransomware. So if we pick one of these and we look for that activity, hopefully we can detect malicious activity in our environment sooner than detecting a bunch of files being encrypted, which if that's happening, you're already under attack. But if you can see things like, for example, and the example we're gonna run with is inhibit system recovery. Let's jump, let's open that in a new tab and see what that has to say. So inhibiting system recovery, it's when adversaries may delete or remove built-in data and turn off services designed to aid in the recovery of a corrupted system to prevent recovery. Why would they do that? Well, if you have backups and you get ransomware or all your data is encrypted, you can just restore from backup. Now, if they find local copies of the backups on your computer, they're gonna destroy it and try and wipe it so that you can't recover effectively. How do they do that? Well, they talk about that too. So they say you could use VSS admin, specifically the delete shadow slash all slash quiet command. You can use WB admin to delete uh, the Windows backup catalog and so on. But they give you a lot of examples that you can use um, to hunt for. Command line arguments, they give you process names. And what, you'll, what you won't see here in the techniques is hashes or indicators of compromise. Because these aren't indicators of compromise. These are functions of the tool that exist that are being abused. That's why threat hunting gets a little hard is because you have to decide when you run these hunts, what is legitimate activity and what's not. I know that's a lot of talking about threat hunting behaviors, but how do, how do we help that? How do how does Cyborg really aid you uh, or support your threat hunting mission? So we focus on that inhibit uh, system recovery and we focus on shadow copies deletion using operating system utilities. This is a hunt package that we designed to find that behavior. Now, if we come down to the description, we can see that. Ransomware is known to delete Windows shadow copies before it begins encrypting the data on the victim host. And then this uh, tactic is typically carried out with PowerShell, VSS admin, or uh, WMIC. So now we have the hypothesis, which is what we believe threat hunting is that it's a hypothesis-based procedure um, or process, but that doesn't really help us with the query. Where's the meat and potatoes? So we're going to scroll down to is the query logic. This is where we build out the logic of the query. We find the values, and more importantly, we build a field to value relationship. And all that is, is a fancy term that we use to say, you know what, what field are we looking for? Process command line. And what value are we looking for in that field? So we say shadow, so we've defined it. So our selection of command line um, slash or underscore A, it's looking for all of these commands. So shadow and delete. Then we're looking for any of the processes that live in the process path field, which would be PowerShell, WMIC, VSS admin, and so on. And if you look down at the condition and we're saying, or command line underscore B. So the second part of the command line. And once again, looking in the field of process command line, we see WMIC, VSS admin or VSS VC. Now, what does that look like? You could take this as is and try and build your own query in your tool where we scroll up, right? We have all the tools that we support. 
And if you click down, you can see the queries that we've created based off of that query logic. So if we support the tool, we try to make it uh, a little nicer for you, especially uh, using um, data aggregation if that's possible and any like functions or transform commands or modifiers or so. In this example, we'll actually be using the Sysmon example. So here you can click on Splunk, edit or endpoint Sysmon. And before we jump into the tool itself, let's take a look at what the query looks like. So we see index is Sysmon. We see the term delete, command line uh, arguments contain shadow, delete, uh, and so on. Or we can take a look at all this query that is, that is Splunk's query and double check it with the query logic and we'll see that it is the same. So what are we gonna do? Let's jump into Splunk. So now that we ran the query and we have results, the first thing I like to recommend is that we check the logic matches up with the data that is showing up. So first, looking at the logic of the query again, we're looking for at least shadow and delete in the command line arguments. If we take a look at the results, we see delete shadows, shadow copy delete, and you can see that shadow is wildcard on both sides, so that matches up as well. Delete shadows, delete shadows. So at this point, nothing sticks out. The logic matches up with the query. Now the intent, we have to decide what's going on. This could be uh, a process that is run on a regular basis. I'm not sure. I'm not sure what your environment looks like. Most of the time, this is associated with ransomware activity where it is going through and deleting all these shadow copies so you can't back up. Now, how I would pivot off of this is I would try to find out or look at the parent process, see if there's any other activity surrounding this act, uh, these events to see if there's anything else that seems suspicious. Uh, you know, is there are there things being downloaded using PowerShell or Bits Admin? Uh, are there registry keys being modified? Are there users being added? And so on. But all these different things or other behaviors that are associated with ransomware, you can go back to the MITRE tech matrix if you want. Uh, the idea is if you're looking at looking for these behaviors specifically around ransomware, what you can do is you can hunt for those different behaviors, see how many you get. And if you get three or four or five, then that might mean that there's an incident going on and you should probably escalate uh, as needed. Well, thank you very much for joining us today. I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you learned a little bit, and especially how threat hunting has the advantage over in the case of compromise. And I wish you the best of luck. Happy hunting.